brought to you by Head Start Basketball. Hey, hoop heads. Wanted to take a minute to shout out our partners and friends at Dr. Dish Basketball. Their Dr. Dish shooting machines are undoubtedly the most advanced and user-friendly machines on the market, and they truly accelerate skill development faster than ever. Learn more at drdishbasketball.com and follow their incredible content at Dr. Dish B-Ball on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Mention the Hoop Heads podcast and save an extra $300 on the Dr. Dish Rebel, All-Star, and CT models. Also, make sure to check out the new Dr. Dish Home Machine. Visit drdishbasketball.com for details. That's a great deal, Hoop Heads. Get your Dr. Dish shooting machine today. Hi. This is Coach Steve Moore, and you're listening to the Hoop Heads Podcast. Prepare like the pros with the all-new Fast Draw and Fast Scout. Fast Draw has been the number one play diagramming software for coaches for years. You'll quickly see why Fast Model Sports has the most compelling and intuitive basketball software out there. For a limited time, Fast Model is offering new subscribers 10% off Fast Draw and Fast Scout. Just use the code SAVE10 at checkout to grab your discount, and you'll be on your way to more efficient game prep and improved communication with your team. Fast Model also has new coaching content every week on its blog, plus play and drill diagrams on its play bank. Check out the links in the show notes for more. Fast Model Sports is the best in basketball. coaches do you have a point guard or leader you're going to be counting on next season to run the show for you don't leave next season to chance thousands of coaches send their players to a point guard college camp each summer to learn to think the game lead a team and run the show your players will be smarter better leaders and better equipped to foster a championship culture next season in practice and in your locker room I've seen firsthand how PGC camps have had a huge impact on players and coaches that I know, both on and off the court. You can go to pgcbasketball.com to find a five-day, four-night camp near you. That's pgcbasketball.com. Men's basketball has got the largest stage, the largest platform, biggest microphone, if you will on our campus and it's important that we find a leader that's going to embrace that piece of the job and be a true spokesperson not just for the basketball program but for our athletic program and for our university welcome to episode three of our hoop heads podcast series called mentality with Dwayne killings season one at u albany this series will document Dwayne's first year as the head men's basketball coach at the university at albany we plan to record and release two to four episodes per month with Dwayne and or players, coaches, administrators, media members, and others associated with the Great Danes basketball program to get an inside look at what being a first-year head coach at the Division I level is all about. If you're looking to improve your coaching, please consider joining the Hoop Heads Mentorship Program. We believe that having a mentor is the best way to maximize your potential and become a transformational coach. By matching you up with one of our experienced mentors, you'll develop a one-on-one relationship that will help your coaching, your team, your program, and your mindset. The Hoop Heads Mentorship Program delivers mentoring services to basketball coaches at all levels through our team of experienced head coaches. Find out more at hoopheadspod.com or shoot me an email directly, mike at hoopheadspod.com. Our roster of shows is growing, so don't forget to check out all our other podcasts on the Hoop Heads Pod network, including Thrive with Trevor Huffman, Beyond the Ball, the CoachMaze.com podcast, Players Court, Bleachers and Boards, the Green Light, Courtside Culture, and our team-focused NBA pods, Cavalier Central, Knuck a Few Buck, 305 Culture, Hashtag Lakers, Motor City Hoops, X's and O's NBA Breakdown, Spanning the Spurs, LA Hoops, The Wizards Hoops Analyst, Lakers Fast Break, At the Buzzer, and Daily Thunder. We're looking for more NBA podcasters interested in hosting their own show centered on a particular team. Email us info at hoopheadspod.com if you're interested in learning more and bringing your talent to our network. Get ready to go behind the scenes with us as we talk with Dwayne Killings, UAlbany Athletic Director Mark Benson, and Deputy AD Vic Seglis about the process that led to Dwayne's hiring as the head men's basketball coach at the University 
at Albany. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Heads podcast. It's Mike Cleansing here without my co-host Jason Sunkel this morning, but I am pleased to be joined by the head coach at the University at Albany, Dwayne Killings, the athletic director, Mark Benson, and the deputy athletic director, Victor Seglis. Welcome, gentlemen. Glad to have you guys on board. We are anxious to dig into the process of hiring a new basketball coach at the Division I level. Mark, Vic, Dwayne, welcome. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate having us on. Thanks a lot. Good to be here. Thanks, Mike. Absolutely. We are excited to have you guys on. Mark, I'm going to start with you. And just let's begin the process. When it is time to hire a new basketball coach as the athletic director, what is the first step in the process? Is it a search firm? Is it a let's brainstorm a list? Is it reach out to contacts that you have at other universities? How do you go about putting together that initial list of names that you want to consider or reach out to? Yeah, that's a good question. There's a lot of things you have to sort of go on your checklist and then deciding on a search firm or not is, is certainly one of the early decisions uh, you need to make. And, uh, you know, given the, the fact that we're in a, a pandemic, uh, our, our budgets are taking pretty heavy hits here at UAlbany and across the country. We, we early on made the decision that we weren't in a position to use a, a search firm. And so for us, the first step, really first step was talking about what type of person do we want to hire as our head coach? What's the profile? Um, what are we looking for from a basketball perspective? What are we looking for from a community perspective? Uh, what type of person are, are we looking for? So we, we gathered our internal folks. Vic was uh, uh, led our search, search committee. Uh, Kara White, our senior women's administrator, and Travis Wilson, one of our associate ADs. I asked everyone to sort of list characteristics uh, that they were looking for in our net, next head basketball coach. We did it separately. Uh, then we got together. Um, and we compare notes and it was not, not surprising. We're all pretty much on, on the same page. Um, so that was the, the first steps. And then same thing with our president, you know, want to make sure we're on board with our campus leadership. Uh, I, I thought we were, I would be surprised if we weren't, but I went through that exercise as well. And then we had a few external folks that we wanted to include in the search process, uh, l- later on towards the end and, um, kind of gathered the same information from each of them in terms of. Um, you know, what, what, who are we looking for? What are we looking for? What do we want to be? And, uh, and really about fit. What's, what's the best fit for us? So that, that was the early, early part of it. Um, from there, um, you know, we got together and, and we started, you know, doing research. Uh, I've been very fortunate the past several years to be part of a group called Top Connect, uh, which is a group of athletic directors across the country uh, that do professional development for basketball coaches, assistant basketball coaches at all levels, all over the country. And I think we're in our third or fourth year. Um, so it's given me a, an opportunity to meet a number of uh, really quality coaches across the country, uh, get, get a feel for the different types of people that are out there, different types of style. And so we, we started with that list and we started all putting it together from, from, from scratch. What's the first thing? What's the number one thing that was on your list, your own personal list, as you started to put that together? Just for you, what was the most important thing or things that you were going to look for? We wanted somebody who's a strong leader, um, somebody who's got a positive, upbeat uh, attitude and personality, somebody that's going to take the, obviously the competitive piece is, is very important. We're here, we, we need to win games and, and championships. But somebody who's gonna look at our student athletes and help develop them uh, academically, help develop them as people and prepare them for life uh, beyond the University of Albany and, and for beyond the days when they're we're playing basketball. So uh, for me, you know, there's a long list you're looking for. Obviously, <laughs> right. looking for the perfect person, right? And uh, in every phase, but those were the things I think that mattered most to me. And I think, you know, Vic's on the call here. He can add to that. But I think we were pretty much on the same page in terms of what we were looking for. Vic, how about you? Um, no, as Mark alluded to, uh, leadership. You know, we wanted somebody that wanted uh, a leader to our 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 basketball players to the rest of our staff, to our other coaches on staff. Um, you know, uh, basketball is one of the more high profile sports at each institution. So, you know, we want somebody that's gonna uh, represent our entire institution to be a leader within our own staff. So leadership was, was, was key and then high energy. I mean, these guys, 
they're they're in our offices, high energy, coming in the morning. I barely got my first sip of coffee. Um, you know, DK's in first, and all the guys are in fist pumping. I'm like, whoa, whoa, these guys eat up. Uh, but it's great. It's great to have. I love it. Um, kind of get to get you going. So, um, yeah, I think we found that. What's the DK. what is the vision when you say leadership? What does that mean in each of your minds, Mark and Vic? What is it that you're looking for? When you say we want a leader, what does that look like day to day in your mind for somebody who's going to head up your basketball program? You know, I think you want somebody who's got a plan, plan for success, the competitive piece, the academic, somebody who's going to represent our university very well. Um, you know, men's basketball has got the largest stage, the largest platform, biggest microphone, if you will, uh, on, on our campus. And it's important that we find – uh, a leader that's going to embrace that piece of the job and, and be a true uh, spokesperson, not just for the basketball program, but for our athletic program, uh, for our university. So, um, you know, that, that, that is very important. Somebody that's going to set a, an example uh, within our department, um, with our coaches, with our administration. You know, everyone's always paying attention to who's, who's at the all-staff meetings, who's coming to the lacrosse games, who's coming to the football games, who's attending the meetings. And it's important that we're all bought in and, and being a, a good uh, department uh, spokesperson and, and leader. So that was important. And of course, you know, with our, our players, just developing them. In our department, we talk about uh, great leaders, great champions, and great Danes. And, it, and, and the great leaders piece is, is to help. We want our student athletes to be leaders on their team, leaders in their classroom, on campus, and then just prepare them for life beyond. And so, so that piece is really important to me. Vic, what about you? Yeah, I think, you know, when it comes to leadership, it's it's pushing pushing people to be better, um, whether it's uh, a student athlete um, or, or uh, support staff. So, you know, when DK has these visions, he comes in and he's like, hey, we got to do this. We got to get done. And being pushed to get stuff done is, is it shows leadership. Um, uh, and we're going to do whatever we can to, to, to get things done here. Um, you know, but being able to, to to bring the best out of each one of his players, I think, is key. And you got to push them, and um, you you got to make sure that they're uh, they're on top of the game and um, they're being pushed every day. So that's what I think leadership is. Mark, how many people were on the initial list after you do that first round of research? How many names do you bring into the conference room to talk about initially after you reach out to your contacts and you kind of do some internal discussion? Um. Well, we did a lot of research. So, um, you know, I think like most people, you, you with these positions, you kind of want to have an idea, certainly the type of person that you're interested in, should you have a change for whatever reason. Uh, and then a list of people that you might, you know, specifically that you're interested in. So um, we had everybody kind of go do their own research, compile their own list, um, and then bring them back together. So I, I would say probably... You know, that initial list, and I don't know, Vic, you can help me, it's been a while, was probably, we, we had a ton of interest. So there's there's the incoming interest, <laughs> right? Uh, and then there, what's that? Right, yeah, the incoming interest, right, doesn't doesn't necessarily always equate to what you guys are coming up with internally, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, just kind of working, there's nothing like a men's basketball coaching search in terms of uh, the speed of it, the, the the number of people who reach out, the, all of a sudden everybody in the world has your cell phone and your email and knows where you, where you know, get coffee and those kind of things. So we wanted to be really focused. So we, we had a good idea of the type of person. We had a good idea of the actual people that we were interested. In. And then it was more about seeing or would they have interest in us. So I would say when we really got to start having the conversation, talking about who do we want to, who do we want to interview? Um, how do we want to do it? You know, the last year plus with the pandemic, like many people, I think, we're all Zoom fatigued at some level, <laughs> but the, uh, the, 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 the reality is Zoom is a great tool to get to know somebody. And so you have a decision, do you cast a really, really wide net uh, because you can through technology, uh, or do you use that technology to really hone in on a smaller group of people because we've done uh, uh, a lot of the homework already and we're, we're prepared. So when it came down to it, we probably had about 12 to 15 names that we were really, really interested in talking to uh, as a group. And then when we actually got to that, you know, it's hard to say what counts as an interview. There's a, millions of conversations like with people from other ADs, other coaches, possible candidates, agents, uh, interested people that just wanted to share input. Um, 
But when it got down to it, we actually decided just to interview six, about six people. I think it was six to eight that, uh, that we did. Six. Initial cut six with the Zoom interview. So when you're putting that together in terms of the interview, you decide, okay, we're going to do this on Zoom initially. What is the process for putting together how the interview is going to flow? In other words, the questions, the types of things you're asking, what you're looking for. How do you guys sit down as an athletic department and put that interview process together? Do you have something that's standard across, let's say, all of the different programs that you're looking for? And obviously, there's some specific basketball questions, but is there a process that you guys go through as an athletic department so that your interviews are, I don't know if standard is the right word, but is there a, is there a, a process in place, no matter who you're interviewing, that you go through? Yeah, there's definitely a process in place. You know, as a state institution, we're, we're obligated to do that. So I don't think the questions are the same from time to time. And I'll let Vic in a second pick this up. But, um, you know, I, I know Vic did this. I did this as well. I reached out to a number of former players just to early on to get their, their impressions of our program, of our job, the type of person they hope we might attract as our head coach. And one of our uh, uh, former players is a, is a headhunter, but he's in the legal sector. And I just said, hey, I would love some, some different questions that you would ask when you're trying to hire uh, a lawyer or a partner to see if it might match up with what we're doing. And then, you know, Vic uh, did a really good job of uh, putting some questions together. Um, so you have your standard interview questions some basketball, but I'll, I'll, I'll let Vic kind of share some of his, his thoughts when he was gathering that, that piece of it. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, your, your standard basketball questions, what, what what is your staff going to look like? What style of play are you going to have? Um, you know, but then you really get into the, the weeds on stuff. You know, how are you going to make um, uh, our basketball players better off the court? You know, give us some ideas there. Um, and, you know, I thought one of the other questions was, tell us one thing about yourself that's not on your resume. And then that kind of opened – we kind of, you know, that opens up a, a whole broad – you know, crazy conversation. I found out that Dwayne likes to bike around on a bike. I had no idea. <laughs> who, who would have thought? You know, you know, have, you're ready for the Tour de France, man. There you go. Yeah. Nah, how about that? At first, I was a motorcycle. And then he's like, nah, nah, it's, a, it's just a, it's a, it's a bike. So there you go. So that's something you get to, to learn. But, uh, yeah, you get a mix of just general standard questions, and then you kind of throw in some of these questions that make you think a little bit. I think when you get an opportunity to interview, it's always interesting to me, having been on interviews and having sit in on interviewing, being part of interview committees, how just the design of the interview, how it can bring out more of the person's personality or less, depending upon the types of questions and just the way it's set up. How many people, I guess on the Zoom, how many on the initial Zoom call, how many people did you guys have in on that initial Zoom interview? In terms of, yeah, on your side. Questions yeah. on our side. Yep, yep. So the, there's four of us uh, on the initial Zoom, um, and you're right. The way you design questions, it, 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 I, I like questions that kind of are open ended, give people a chance to to dig a little deeper into to the question, talk a little bit more. And you know, before the questions with technology, I mean, we did a ton of research. I, I listened to your show. I, I picked up some things about DK that I didn't know. I so we'd seen some interviews that he had done with the Big East. We'd, we've seen some footage that uh, the different schools he's been at, and he, he's been a part of. So with technology and, and meet, you know, digital media, you can get a feel for people, what they're, what they're like, what they look like in game, how do they interact with their players, how are they in front of the media. Um, so that, that part of it helps you get very prepared uh, before the questions. And I think when it works well, um, it becomes really conversational and, and not just uh, here's tell me the style of play of basketball. Well, we're going to be up tempo and defend. Great. No, it, it, it becomes when it's conversational, you know, you're on the right track with somebody. And what are some of the things that you're asking in that initial interview in terms of trying to get a feel for whether or not Dwayne or any other candidate is going to be a good fit specifically for you Albany, is there, is there a question, a series of questions that are designed to figure out whether or not, okay, this person may be a great basketball coach. They may be the right person for a job, but they may not be, or they may be the right person for this job. So is there something specific to your university 
that was important as you were guys were going through the process? Yeah, I think when you're going into it, if you if you make if you're making it to the first round of an interview, I think um, the reality is if 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 the school in our case, we've done a, we did a lot of homework. We felt very comfortable uh, with our initial group of folks, and so we already think. We already thought DK could do the job, right? Before we even had the interview, we thought he would be a good fit based on all the research we have done. And then you use those questions to actually see uh, if in reality it is a good fit. And your fit changes at you all, but it, 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 it might be one thing we're looking for now. And when, when DK wins, you know, does a final four and blows it up and <laughs> we might be looking for something else at, yep. at that time. And I think every school is the same way. Um, so, you know, style of, from a basketball perspective, we, we were really interested in what are we going to look like? How are we going to play? What type of guys are we going to recruit, uh, to your system? Uh, what kind of academic profile are, are you, are you looking for in, in players? Um, so that, that part of it, you know, we, we had a certain interest in a certain style of play that we hoped, uh, that, that we could transition into, uh, with DK. So from a basketball perspective, that was, that was important to us. Um, Vic, have you, uh, if you want to add anything from your, your end, you probably have the list of questions. He's in front of his laptop, so he's probably got the, the actual list of questions right in front I do. of him. <laughs> I, you know, I got to have my, my notes up. Um, no, I mean, again, the, the first question we ask is, why are you interested in the University at Albany men's basketball coach, coach position? And how does your background and experience qualify you for this position? So it's very – generic question um but again like like mark said with the people that uh you have in mind you already think they're a good fit and then you just have to really dig in and 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 see if they're the right fit um you know there's a there's many coaches that are a good fit but are they the right fit so you know, like mark alluded to earlier i when we had our list we start doing some research simple google searches you know i put in uh Dwayne Killings in episode 388 shows up on, on who pays here. So, and I got a 45 uh, minute commute to work. So I threw that sucker on, was listening to it. Um, and I sent it to Mark. I'm like, Hey, you got to listen to this. So um, it, when you start doing some research, um, it's uh, you start finding things, uh, videos, you know, behind the scenes of, of coaching and all that stuff. So uh, technology has uh, really helped um, us really hone in on who we wanted. Dwayne, on the other side of it, go ahead, Mark, and then I want no, to ask Dwayne something. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to add, uh, the other side is we've talked about how much homework we've done, um, but it's pretty pretty easily, pretty apparent who uh, which candidate has done their, their homework. And uh, for those that have done it, it's great, and it helps the process, and it's pretty quick to identify those that have not really done their homework, and that helps you sort of, get that back to the fit piece of it who who is serious who is would be a, a really terrific head coach here and so you know we had a, for the most part our pool is our pool is excellent dk rose to the top from a very strong pool um but you know some are more prepared than others so Dwayne, that was actually the, exactly where i was going with my next question is how do you then as someone who is looking for that head coaching position and you target in and you say hey i want to be at you albany how do you go about preparing yourself for that interview? Obviously, over the course of time, you've prepared as someone who's wanted to be a head coach. You've prepared in a generic way for being a head coach in terms of putting together a portfolio of things and you have an idea, all the stuff that you've learned at all the different places that you've been. But once you target in and zero in on one particular job, how do you make sure that you're prepared to demonstrate that you're going to be the right fit for that particular university in this case you albany yeah um i would say when it all started i didn't anticipate it happening on zoom right you think of becoming a head coach and what the interview is going to look like you don't think it's going to be in the middle of a pandemic so that was a little different but i think i did the same thing that you know vic and mark did you know you try to do some research about who they are as people um, a little research about their professional careers. And we had already had crossed paths. We already had relationships, which really helped. So then it's about, is it a good fit? So for me, when the interview started, although they're interviewing me, I'm watching Mark and Vic to see their body language because I want to make sure they work well to, with each other. Because when I get on campus, that this has to become a team and we have to be aligned. And, you know, Vic and I are joined at the hip. And then obviously Mark is the leader at the top. 
but you know, our support administrator is VIC. So what is that partnership gonna look like? And what are some of the issues at the university level? Through some research, you know, COVID has disrupted some things at the state level and it's taken some funding. So how does the basketball program help that? You know, what are the things in the community and how does the basketball program help those and address those things? And then looking at the team, you know, what can we do better from a recruiting perspective and style play perspective to try to win our league? So I'm doing my research and then thinking, okay, how I want to run my program, my vision, does it connect and does it fit? And right away, the people I've committed become teammates with, check that box. I thought my vision really connected. I thought it was a really good fit for my family from a city perspective. Because while I was doing my piece, my wife is looking into Albany and has it worked for my kids and my wife. So at that point, I walked in when the Zoom screen opened up, I was really confident that this is the job for me. So now I have to articulate that. And over time, they put me through the ringer, but over time, <laughs> you know, it felt like it was this is the right move. And I think when it was time to say they were going to offer me the job, it was really easy for me to say yes. And it was really easy for them to offer it because the fit was, it was clear. It was a perfect fit. Hey, hoop heads, we all hate ankle sprains and they happen way too often. Ankle injuries are the number one sports-related injury. Arise is trying to change that. With the iFast, your athletes get preventative protection and full mobility. Athletes no longer need to wear bulky braces that limit performance and give mediocre protection. Anyone playing sports should be using these products. Keep your athletes in the game. Don't wait for them to get hurt to take action. Visit www.arise.com slash team pricing to learn more. That's A R. Y S E dot com. All right. So after that initial zoom to walk me through the rest of the process, Mark of, okay, so you get the initial six people on zoom. What's the next round of interviews look like? How many people make it to that second cut? And just, just walk us through what the rest of the process looks like till you eventually get to that decision where, you know, you're going to offer DK the job. Yeah, so we got through the six, and actually we were we were really happy with the pool. And and um, at one point we said, well, maybe we, you know, we'll add another two person or two into the mix. But then as we started thinking about it, I said, hey, we got some really quality people that that we're highly interested in that are highly interested in us. What what are we doing? We just need to other jobs are open, and we need to we need to accelerate this. So. Uh, you know, talking to our president was key. I uh, wanted him to be in, involved uh, in the process. And, you know, you, you talk about, do you bring two people? <laughs> like to DK's point, normally, would you bring them here? But via Zoom, uh, two or three people to the president, two or three people to, we had a group of four donors, board members that we wanted to meet uh, the finalists uh, uh, separately from us to get their feedback and their input. Um, and so ultimately we decided in partnership with our president, we would bring, we would bring two finalists to him and, and, and to the committee. So, uh, I think we went from like, I think we held a Tuesday, Wednesday of the following week, uh, with, and doctor, I went to Dr. Rodriguez on a Friday. I said, Hey, I, I, I got a big favor to ask of you. Uh, I know you're a busy guy. Is, is there any way we can accelerate this and get, get you in front of, uh, these two candidates over the weekend? Uh, and he was terrific. I mean, he's, he said, well, you have to explain it to my wife, Rosie, why, I, why I'm going <laughs> to give up my Saturday night with her. Uh, but he did. Uh, and we had explained the same conversation with some of our, our, our external folks like, Hey, we, could you, could you give us your, your weekend, which they all, uh, gladly did. So the next step was to get, uh, DK in front of the president, uh, one-on-one. -on -one. We, we were not part of that conversation. And then in, in front of our group of donors, uh, uh, separately. So, Dwayne, what do those conversations look like? Yeah, with the president, it was just natural. Um, talking about who I was as a person, who I would be as a leader, you know, what I thought about the university and the basketball program and the opportunity. And then he talked about his vision. And then I think, again, as he's talking, you know, some of my vision starts to become to life, you know, because he's talking about the work he does in Puerto Rico and how important kids are to him and how important community is to him. And he had actually worked in Milwaukee. So to Mark's point, it became a conversation. It wasn't really an interview, which was, which is really cool. Um, when you pivoted to the donors, you know, you don't really know. I had never been in that situation. And when I actually talked to other head coaches that have been through it, you know, a lot of them talked about going to dinner with guys and that's a different experience. So it's four people just peppering you with questions, but I was really impressed with the detail 
of questions they had about recruiting and about different experiences. And one guy literally was just looking at some articles he was reading while we were on the Zoom, and he was just asking me to follow up about what was this story about you know, when I was at Temple. And that was six or seven years ago, you know, and that's on the fly. So you got to be able to answer that and think back really quickly to connect to that moment in your life. Um, but it showed their passion for the program. Um, it showed that their desire to get it right. And again, I'm a big body language person. As time went on, I was like, this is going really well because you could just feel it, you know, like the questions and the energy and the feedback and the smiles and the responses. Um, so I never really felt intimidating because again, I think who I am and what I represent, the experiences I have, it related to what the opportunity was all about. Um, and as time went on, you know, you follow up with some text messages or emails saying, thank you. The responses you get back, you start feeling like you got a legitimate chance to get the job. It's just once you're done, you know, those next hours that go by, it feels like, you know, days are going by. Because you're <laughs> waiting, you know, you're waiting and, you know, you get a phone call. I heard this. I heard that. You know, I heard um, Phil Jackson's going to take the job. You know, it's just crazy. You know, you hear all this crazy stuff along the way, which is agonizing, but it makes you feel like this is a job you really, really want because your heart's in it. Vic, if this had happened a year ago, in other words, if you had been hiring a coach last uh, you know, last spring instead of this spring, where the pandemic is just hitting and we're all not quite as used to Zoom and being able to interview and do the things that we've done video wise. How much more challenging do you think the process would have been a year ago to be able to sort of navigate the tech piece and be able to interview coaches compared to how it was now where we've all had, you know, whatever, a year plus just getting used to looking at each other on screens and being able to interview. What, what's your thought on that? Yeah, it's crazy. The silver lining that comes out of COVID, you know, um, you know, Skype, we used to do Skype interviews. I'm like, why do we do Skype interviews? There's somebody on a screen. You really don't get to know anybody that way. Um, that was all before COVID. Um, but, you know, I think traditionally you, you would like to still get in front of people. I mean, I think that's a great way for you to, uh, to get to know somebody. Um, so I would say to, to backtrack that, uh, if it was this was uh, the year before, you know, me and Mark made a sh shot down on the train down to New York City during the Big East tournament and, you know, catch him in a, in a lobby, maybe catch a couple other people that are there. Um, A10 is, is in Barclay. So um, we're kind of lucky in that, that we could shoot down to New York City and have those resources. But um, I think that as time and Zoom became normal, you know, that was a direction we had thought about. We talked about going down to New York City and then you start having conversations like, well, we're in a bubble in our hotel. We can't get out. So now we're like, all right, well, well, let's do the Zoom thing. So um, it definitely made it easier that everybody had practice for a year to, to learn how to do it. Um, but again, it, it's getting to I, I still like the the face to face and, and getting to know somebody. But Zoom definitely, definitely helped that process. Uh, Mike, could I add to um... That's a great question because a year ago, uh, people were probably trying to figure out the the, the angle of their camera and right, how to exactly. the background and and yeah, so certainly you'd have to give somebody a little break a year ago. Um, but I would say that, that that like DK translated so well on Zoom and, and others. Like so, if you can come across via Zoom and really show your personality, really talk about what's important to you from a basketball perspective or whatever job you might be. You might be interviewing for a pharmaceutical job somewhere. It, it, if you can come across and translate via Zoom, we know when we see you in person that it's it's going to be a, it's going to be really good. And so that that was one kind of cool thing about Zoom is you know just to see. And if you think about it, uh, coaches DK is going to be in front of a camera a lot, and and that's how he's going to be perceived as via uh, our our local sports uh, TV stations. And so it's kind of just a big extension of that. But you're right, a year ago. We're just trying to figure out how to log on to Zoom. So right. uh, yeah. very interesting. All right. So you get down to the final decision. What is – who's in the room when the final decision is made that you're going to offer Dwayne the job? And then once you make that decision, how do you reach out to him? What is that conversation like from your guys' perspective? Yeah, uh, so good question. We had the Saturday, the one-on-one -on -one with the president and our donors, and then um, you know, Vic and I uh, scheduled time with DK on a, I think it was Sunday, 
Uh, and we probably spent three hours together on a Zoom, just like really getting into the weeds on, um, you know, hey, you, you talked about the type of guys you're going to bring on your staff. Who are you? Who are you thinking about? And uh, I, I remember uh, Deke says, hey, can I can I get control of this Zoom? I said, well, I don't know how to do it, but I'm sure Vic can, <laughs> can let you do it. And, uh, you know, he brought up the one slide of some of the some of the guys that he was thinking about. And and I remember thinking, I, I like this. I like this thought process. I like and you, you, you can't hold anyone. You never know if things are going to work out. It, it was a group of people that he might be interested that might be interested in coming here, but it wasn't like, well, I kind of like this type of person or I kind of like that type of person. Um, but we really spent, you know, three hours, I think it was Sunday evening, just just talking. And and to Vic's point, normally that might have happened at a hotel room or uh, Madison Square Garden where you can, can sit down together. But it certainly didn't feel like we were separated by, I don't know how many miles it is from Albany to Milwaukee. I know you can't work, walk there quickly, but it About did not, thousand. thousand? Yeah, it did About not thousand. feel like a thousand miles at all. It was a very um, good, productive uh, conversation. So that was the three of us. And, um, you know, I think that would have been, would have been like 10 days, 12 days. I don't, I don't know where we were in the process at that point. Yeah. And that one was like, DK, you know, put the suit away, throw some sweats on, like, let's just get casual. Let's just talk. Let's just have a conversation between, you know, the three of us. Um, so it wasn't like a formal interview. It was like, all right, tell me why. Tell me what happened at UConn, you know, tell us what, what happened here. Um, so it was really, uh, we dove in and had some, some serious, some serious conversations because, you know, this was, a, this was the last step. Dwayne, what were some of the questions you had? What questions did you have for Mark and Vic at that point? Yeah, I think it was about diving deeper into the, like, where is the program at, you know, reflective to the league? Um, you know, what are some issues from their vantage point about the players and the program and what's the health of it? You know, what's the academic situation like? And, you know, you're going from Marquette. It's one of the highest resource programs in the country. To Albany, so like, how do we how do we make all this work? Because I I understood where I was going, but I want to hit the ground running. So when you talk about your vision, it's like, how do you have to change it and twist it a little bit to make it fit, you know, where you're going? And it was great that they were so transparent. So now all of a sudden, you know, I'm starting thinking, well, if this really happens. I need to get these three or four things ready to go as soon as we hit the ground. Um, and again, it made you feel really confident about the partnership and the alignment because we've had those same conversations either in the office or going to get something to eat about the program so it's just a continuation of what we did on zoom um and it felt like we had already been working together when we got on that last call for for two or three hours because the comfort level and i think there was already trust that was being built and that's how this thing's going to work you know whether you're talking about recruiting or my staff or working with vic and mark it's all going to be based off of trust and, you know, it's been blind trust since we got here. It's been a great fit and we've had great success so far as we're building the program out as we're transitioning. Mike, can I add to the, um, the DK kind of stole the words alignment and fit and talking about resources. It's, it's important to know what you're going into, what the situation is. And Vic talked earlier about like we, 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 we like it when coaches push us to be better. Everybody, everybody wants to get better. Everyone wants to have accountability. It goes it goes both ways. And, and and the other word I would use is partnership is, is really important. And, and it goes with alignment. So if we can't do exactly this ABC that you want to do, how can we work together to get there? Right. How do we work to get resources? How do we how do we work to get people involved to help us do this? Um, let's continue to try to get better, but let's let's do it together. And uh, throughout this process, it was it was very much it just became clear with every conversation that, that we were, I think, all aligned philosophically, uh, whether it's basketball, life, academics. Um, and I, I will say one of the things that was really impressive about DK um, is some of, you know, with what we're all going through in the world uh, with social injustice, his, his leadership, back to what we talked about earlier, man, he, he stepped out uh, with the other assistant coaches in the Big East and um, for coaches for action, and and I was I was really really impressed uh, with his leadership. Uh, you know, getting the other schools and assistants together, sort of selling this through to 
the Big East presidents and athletic directors. I talked to a number of people that were part of that process uh, and, and some that already knew DK and some that that was their first uh, sort of introduction to him. And, and, and just that was, a, that was a very, very impressive and important piece of, I think, where, where we ended up. I think one of the things that is probably even more important today than it's ever been when you start talking about coaching is those things, those pieces of off the floor of developing your players, not just as basketball players, but also developing them as people and then having sort of a vision of what you, how you fit into the greater university environment and the greater campus environment. It seems like, and I'm guessing, and this is just me as an outsider, I would think that probably over time, let's say over the last 20 to 25 years, that the importance of those things outside of directly the basketball program have become more important in the hiring of a coach where you see, I guess I, the word that keeps coming back to me is you have a coach that kind of has their little fiefdom and they're in their own little bubble of, hey, I'm running the basketball program and I'm not necessarily a part of the bigger university. I think that's becoming more and more and more rare. You now have a situation where coaches in any program are a part of the bigger piece of the university. Do you see, is that a trend, something that you've seen over the course of your time in college athletics or, or am I maybe misstating how it was in the past? No, I don't, I don't think you're misstating it at all. And I think you could probably some other sports would fall under that same, same category. I think the other days of just, just being a basketball coach, just recruiting the best players, just coming up with the best game plan to just win. Uh, you know, winning is important. The right player is important, but there's so much more to it. You know, men's basketball is so highly visible uh, on our campuses. It's so highly visible in the, in the community. And then when you're at places that re you, you need to generate resources to continue to get better, and, and, and you have to, like, engage people and let people into it, uh, whether they're on campus working in, in administration, whether they're, community members, alumni, former players. There's so many components that go into building a successful, healthy basketball program that start with the basketball but go outwards. And, and you have to really be focused on that. You have to pay attention to that. Um, and, and you've got to put together a staff and a, and a team, whether it's your assistants or your administration, that can help you navigate that, especially, you know, for DK as a first-time coach. I think that's what we need to do. We need to work together to help him navigate some of this and help him get where we all want to be. Vic, is that going to be part of your day-to-day -day role is to kind of help to make sure that things are working the way that they're supposed to and that the relationship between Dwayne and the athletic department and the athletic department and the student body and the, and the basketball program is your role in that sort of liaison, making sure that things are going smoothly so everyone's working together on the same page? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're, I mean, these guys, we're redoing their uh, their – uh, offices right now so they're over here in the administrative uh, conference room working um, but they're in, they're in my office hey let's do this let's get out um, you know we have a lacrosse game this weekend let's get out and hand out ice cream to, to students so um, we uh, they, they want to be out in the community which is great and we're going to help them uh, wherever we can uh, like we talked about we we don't have all the resources that we don't have we have one marketing person um, we have 18 sports um, so we have to uh, work harder, uh, you know, uh, make sure that we are taking care of what, what Dwayne needs to done, but, uh, get done. But we also need to make sure we're, we're doing the, our day to day stuff. So, um, it's, there's a balance there, but we're, we're going to, we're going to get going and, uh, we're excited about it. So, Hey Mike, so Vic, uh, he's just forgotten one important uh, duty to help DK is really smart thing DK does. He got the mentality t-shirts and he got them out around <laughs> campus and he knew that he knew, he knew Vic was a baseball player at Rutgers. So he thought, well, if anybody in the department maybe could throw a t-shirt further, further than the basketball coaches and students, so that would be an important part of his, his day to day. But uh, so it's kind of funny. A t-shirt, a t-shirt cannon wasn't in the budget. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a repair shop and uh, All right, we have other priorities. Oh, but, 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 but Vic's got a, a stronger arm than the t-shirt gun, so we'll use him. And, and also, right. I will say, Vic's fueled on gasoline. Dude has more energy than anybody I've seen, so he's our first one to get it all done. <laughs> and when, it, when, when his arm wears out, Travis Wilson, who was also on the search committee, actually was a baseball picture at Albany, and, and he will tell you he's got the strongest cannon in the department, so we got a backup plan. All right, there you go. Exactly.
Sounds like you guys are ready for an athletic department decathlon or something to really throw, <laughs> throw, the, throw, yeah. the, throw, the, throw the gauntlet down and get after it. Hey, coaches, parents, and group leaders. I want to introduce you to our newest sponsor, SnapRaise. SnapRaise is the nation's largest digital donation platform built to help teams, youth groups, and clubs raise money quickly and efficiently without selling products. SnapRaise builds your group a customizable campaign website, and students use their mobile devices to connect and engage with their biggest fans. My son's high school team used SnapRaise this season, and our team raised all the money they needed to fund their season, and then some. Getting SnapRaise started is quick and free. Just visit SnapRaise.com and you'll get connected to a local SnapRaise expert in no time. When you offer Dwayne the job and he accepts, how do you, how do you let the other candidate know that they were not your choice? And then once you let that other candidate know, what's the next stage? And I talked to Dwayne a lot about this, the, just the press conference that you guys put together and the welcome that you had for him and his family to the university. I went back and watched it kind of in my own prep for interviewing Dwayne and getting ready for this. And it just, you couldn't help but come away impressed by what you guys were able to put together in terms of welcoming him and his family to the university. So I guess the first part is how do you let the other candidate know that, Hey, we're going in a different direction. And then once you know, you've settled on Dwayne and he's accepted the job, how do you get that prepared to introduce him to the community at UAlbany? Yeah, so the best part is offering PK the job and accepting the worst part of the process is, is that follow-up piece. And, um, you know, I, we, we, I felt it was important that I personally reached out to uh, the other person that we had on campus and have a conversation, um, which is, you know, never easy for anybody. They probably don't want to talk to me at that point in time. And, but I felt it was important uh, that they hear from me. Uh, we actually did it a uh, FaceTime or uh, Zoom because I just wanted to, you know, you can't be in person, but eyeball to eyeball and, and look at somebody and, and talk them through where, where we landed uh, was, was really hard uh, to do, but I think really important to do. And then I know Vic uh, reached out to some of the others uh, uh, that, that we did not offer to. And, and he might've done that actually. Bef actually, I don't, Did you, Vic, before you moved to two? I don't know. I can't remember the time yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, I did it right before too. You know, the like the hardest thing, man, is is stuff starts leaking, and you know, we tried to keep this. The, our search committee was four people. We had the president, and then you know, four donors. Uh, so we try to keep it as as tight as possible. But then people start making um, you know guesses, and it starts getting out, and you're like, oh man, we gotta we gotta move quickly. Um, <laughs> we gotta start calling some people here. Um, so. Yeah, we tried to knock it all out um, beforehand um, before we made the made the offer. Just so if it did get leaked, it was um, you know they they at least hear it from us before seeing it on Twitter. And then the press conference. How do you guys? What's the process? What's the plan? How do you go about coming up with the ideas and thoughts of how you want to welcome Dwayne to the university? Yeah. So I'll I'll really turn to the, this. I've been here six and a half years. I think. DK is the seventh coach, head coach I've hired here at University of Albany. And that, so everyone's been a little bit uh, different. But obviously with basketball, there's a lot of, a lot of media attention um, around th this hire. Uh, we, we felt it was important that, you know, uh, you know, there's DK, but then there's team killings. And we really want to embrace, we wanted his, his family to feel comfortable uh, coming in here and feeling like they're welcome and, and, and part of it. And I think we were successful in that. And, you know, I, I, I look back, I have four kids, uh, young kids. When I got here, I had three. So I'm a New Yorker. But, um, you know, when you're moving your family, uh, this is a big decision, right? Impacts a lot of people. And so I've always felt uh, it's very important that that's a very important part of the process. And then, you know, Vic and his team, you know, Vic, Laura Ram, Griff Hunter, uh, just put together a great, great presentation uh, the, the coverage we did from the airport uh, to the hotel to everything was just really, really well done. And uh, credit to Vic and his team for putting that all together. What did that process? Yeah, I give plan, credit. Yeah, yeah, what did that planning process look like, Vic? How do you come up with that the the plan? Yeah, so I, I um, regardless of who we were doing it, we wanted to to make it a, a show. And so I had these conversations with our external team. Um, beforehand and say, hey, 
you know, this is going to be a big day for us. It's going to be a big day for, for team killings. Like let's blow this thing up. Let's document this day. Um, so what do we need? So it started with, all right, they're coming off the plane. Let's get some cheerleaders there. Cheerleaders were a little late. Dwayne's uh, airport uh, is playing in a little early. I'm texting him. Like, don't come down. Don't come down the escalator just yet. Uh, that's funny. Um, so, uh, you know, coming off the plane, we had a photographer there. We had a, a videographer there and um, get them off the plane, take them, take them down, uh, took them right to campus. Um, did a little tour here um, and then brought them to the, to the uh, hotel. Uh, but the next day doing the, the production, you know, Laura Remia is, she's awesome. She's, she's a beast when it comes to, to production. We have one of the better um, ESPN uh, productions here uh, in the conference, but she put this thing together. She had her own vision. Our marketing director had his own vision. Um, our sports information directors uh, had, had their vision. So it all kind of came together. But it was a, an unbelievable day. Um, our, our videographer literally worked through the night to put that video together because uh, that all happened within, you know, 12 hours or 24 hours. So um, it, was a, it was everybody stepped up. And it was just, it, I was so proud of them after that day. I got chills watching it the next day. I'm like, man, I can't believe we just pulled that off. I mean, that was, that was really, really impressive and incredible. And, and hats off to my team because, you know, um, their, their vision helped. And we all, we, all, we all got together on the same page and, and knocked out the park. Yeah, it was so well done. I mean, I think as somebody, as an outsider who was watching it, I don't think you could do anything except come away impressed both with, the university themselves and what you guys put together. And then obviously uh, Dwayne made you look good too, man. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you put all that, you put that whole thing together and I think it was a very impressive way to start. So we're coming up on an hour, gentlemen. I want to ask you guys one final question and all three of you can probably answer this question and maybe you, uh, I'm assuming you're all hopefully going to answer it in the same way, but maybe from a slightly different perspective. And that is when you sit down and you think a year from now, so one year after Dwayne's been hired, how are you going to judge whether or not year one has been a success? What are the criteria that you're going to use to evaluate whether year one has been what you envisioned that it would be? So maybe Mark, why don't you take it first and then Vic, you take it second and Dwayne will wrap up with you. Yeah. So I mean, still in the pandemic, right. And it, it, it alters your, your perception on things, your expectations. So I would tell you after month one, I already feel like, uh, we've made, had a success. I just love the way DK and his staff have engaged uh, on campus, engaged our, our, our current players, um, worked with them, getting them to buy into their vision. It's apparent. You can see it. Uh, worked from day one to engage our department, our campus community. I mean, the guys surprised us at a coffee group I go to every Friday morning with his entire staff just to get out and meet people on campus. So that piece early on is is has been a, a huge check. After a year, year one, we hopefully will we're gonna have a competitive season and we have to put ourselves in a chance to win a championship and have uh, our student athletes that are fully engaged competitively, academically in the community uh, wanna see that happen. Uh, and then who who knows what what the what the or SFQ Arena will look like in terms of what we're allowed to have in, in our fan base based on New York State guidelines. It appears that things are opening up uh, as we speak day by day, but it, it, if the pandemic taught us anything, it's, hey, stay nimble and be prepared to react. So hopefully the health and, and, and just engaging more people uh, along this way in year one, I think, I think will be important. Vic, what about from your perspective? Um. For me, after a year, I think it's going to be how do people win, lose, or draw? What is the energy around the program? You know, um, are they excited to be here? Are they excited about the future? Um, I think that's a win. I think, you know, bringing in kids, um, you know, you see some of the kids that, that Dwayne's already brought in and, and developing those kids, and, you know, they grow into this program and our fan base grows around them and they really get to know them as as a 
as a student, um, as a, as a player. Uh, and again, who knows how many fans, I wish we could pack this thing every day. Who knows what we're going to do, but, um, you know, as long as there's some energy there and you're already seeing it, Mark, I, Mark, Mark mentioned it earlier, it's been a month and the amount of energy around our program has been absolutely incredible. Um, everybody's excited. And um, we were hoping we knew me, Mark knew it was going to be exciting. Uh, but now everybody's buying in on it. And um, it's really, really incredible to see. So, you know, after a year, you know, win, lose or draw, we want to win more than we lose. But um, it's having that that energy around in uh, our, our program. Dwayne, how do you judge it? Um, yeah, I think for me, I, I fell in love with the job because of the attention to detail and the care that I think the way I was received and my family was received when we got here, um, that press conference was amazing. Like I had NBA head coaches, John Calperi texting me saying that was high level. So because of that, I cared more about this opportunity than I probably did when I got on the plane, just because one, they're <laughs> believing in me, but they, they did it at such a high level. I couldn't ask for more. And I say that to say that I think one of the ways I'm going to evaluate the program is we need to make people care about us. And to do that, we have to care about other people, whether they're on campus or in the community. That's step one. And then when I look at the academic side of it, um, I'm hope at the end of the semester, we've done a better job in the classroom. That's a win. Then I hope in the community, we've impacted the community. So when people say, hey, when these guys arrive, they've done these four or five things that really impacted the capital region. Then on campus, I just want to connect to the people on the other side of campus and support the other teams where people say, hey, the program impacted people. Then on our team, I got to make our guys better as men and make them better as players. We do those things. We'll be ready to compete. And if we're ready to compete at the level I want to compete at, then we're going to win games. And I think everybody will be happy with the results. But I think it's just a month by month process. And I think this first month has been terrific. Now we got to move into the next month. Hey, hey Mike, can I add one thing? Absolutely. You know, uh, some, sometimes I, I'm a big believer in things happen for a reason. Things are meant to be. And uh, DK talked about, we talked about connecting a lot, right? Uh, whether it's students, current athletes, community. But he started connecting on his way in. I, I got a, we got a picture from him from the, from the airplane he was flying in on. And he's got his Under Armour gear on. And, and he's got his arm around the pilot. And at first I wasn't sure, was he nervous about flying or what was happening? Turns out the pilot was a UAlbany alum, and he's bringing him here to, to, to campus. And at that, at that moment, I'm like, hey, man, you know, this is, this is meant to be. But it was also like that's how DK interacts with people. It's very authentic, and it's very real. And it started the minute he hit that plane, and can't wait to see what it looks like a year from now. Yeah, absolutely. I can vouch for that, just the fact that he and I have been able to connect on this project just from him jumping on and being a guest. And after Stan Johnson from Loyola Marymount introduced us, it's just been amazing the connection that we've been able to build. So before we wrap up here, Mark, I want to give you an opportunity. How can people connect with the U at Albany athletic department, share how people can find out more about what you guys are doing. I know Dwayne has done that already on uh, the first two uh, parts of this series, but just how can people connect with the university? And then after that, I'll jump back in and wrap things up. Yeah, I think the easiest way, uh, and you're talking to a guy that's not on Instagram and it's not on uh, <laughs> Facebook and it's not on and other social media, but UAlbanySports.com is our hub. Uh, it's a redesigned website. It can get you to all our social media accounts, both for individual programs, uh, the university, the latest grace. There's an app you can download right off of that. That's a terrific real-time up-to-date uh, through your, your phone, and uh, I think that's the best way. And, you know, Vic is much more into the, into the digital world than I am, and he could correct me where I was wrong or give a better option. <laughs> <laughs> no, you knocked out part. Um, you social media, um, you know, uh, Dwayne, again, has, has tasked us with, with growing our social media. Um, so we're going to put a campaign together with our staff um, this summer and, and put a, a game plan to get our social medias going. So, yeah, follow us on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook. And then, as Mark said, we, we just launched this new app. Um, it's great. So you can, you can, catch, you can catch all your Danes um, on that app. Gentlemen, I cannot thank you enough for taking an hour of your time this morning to join us and kind of give us some insight into the process of what it's like to hire a head basketball coach at the Division I level. So Mark, Vic, and Dwayne, obviously, thanks to all of you for taking that time and to everyone who's out there in our audience listening. 
We appreciate you sticking with us and we will catch you on our next episode. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Hoop Heads podcast presented by Head Start Basketball.